welcome listeners to episode 19 of the Running Guy podcast, where I aim to provide informative content and interviews with elite athletes from around the world. Like in today's episode, where I'm chatting to an Aussie distance runner that's had an incredibly successful career thus far, who's currently training in Kenya with the aim of running qualifying time for the Tokyo Olympics. Welcome to the Running Guy podcast, Harry Summers. How's it going? Good, good. Mate, really appreciate you taking time to chat to us today. I'm sure the uh, logistics of online interviews are a bit more challenging out of uh, out of Kenya. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, it's just it's uh, as long as the line's all right, then it's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, it sounds all right, yeah. mate. Um, yeah. You been out running today? Uh, yeah, I did a, just a 20k this morning at 6:30. Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, so yeah, yep. just like uh, easy pace. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it's uh, what is it? It's ten past eleven in the morning over there at the moment. Uh yeah, it's eleven. So six six thirty. Um, it was about four hours ago. Yeah, that I did it. Yes. Yeah. Yep. All right, mate. So I'm um, sticking with the usual opening routine to get the listeners up to scratch um, with your running history. I'll just sort of um, run through your PBs, and if um, if you can fill in any details that you can sort of recall leading in or or during the event. Just to, oh, it sort of um, yeah, no, adds a bit of context to the times. All right, starting yeah. with um, with your 3,000 metre, you've ran a 7.51.63 on the 7th of Feb back there in Melbourne uh, yeah. last year, 2019. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was in barefoot shoes. Oh, really? <laughs> the, famous, the famous Vibrams, yeah. Yeah, the Vibrams um, were still going last year. I didn't realise that. Yeah, no, well, the thing was I was late to the, the race. So I had a bloody um a friend staying over from overseas and he wanted to go check out a few sites in melbourne so i was i was a bit late for the race and i forgot my spikes yeah, okay. at home so um so i could only find my most vibrams the barefoot shoes so yeah, yeah. i thought i'll oh, stuff i've run I've, I've run well in them before so i'll give them a, a crack and yeah i was i was really happy with running 751 i'm i led the whole race pretty much, and uh, threw in like a la- fast, uh, I think it was the second last lap, a 60-second yeah. uh, lap, and I just um, I went away from Ramsden. Um, okay. He's a, yeah, he's a Melbourne track boy. Sure, sure. Um, Excellent. Yeah, so it was great, like, um, winning that race because it was, it was um, my club's, um, uh, home track and and also the club put on the uh the race as well okay yep fantastic yeah um so yeah that's great for sure 5,000 meters 1334 even zero zero on the 21st of august over there in dublin last year in 2019 oh yeah yeah um yeah that was uh uh that was a really tough race it was windy and and raining um Patrick Tienan won the race. Uh, he actually fell over halfway through the race and um, got back up and <laughs> caught up to the group and then kicked away. But I think I got fourth in that race. And, um, yeah, I was happy with that because I did Sydney Surf two weeks before and that was a massive, like, um, hit out and, and performance for 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 my career. And um, I think I hadn't really recovered properly from from the 14K. Yeah. Um, so it was a great hit out uh, the 5k and to get a PB was awesome and then I did a 10k which was like I think two weeks after that where I got another PB as well. That's it, yeah. yeah. Now we'll talk about the city surf, but um, yeah. So 10 days later in Norway, Christensen, you ran your 10k yeah. PB, 10,000 I should say PB, 27.54.15. So um, yeah, the first time yeah. I went, went under 28. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was. Um, and that's that's where I, uh, I met Renato Kvnova, um famous uh, running coach, marathon coach, sure. and um, um, he's the one that set up the race and um, invited me over. Um, and yeah, I had dinner with him the night before the race, and I got chatted to him, and and I liked his philosophy of you know towards the marathon and and middle distance running. Um, and he kind of just chatted with him for half an hour. He already knew that my background was 
I was lacking a lot of base. So I liked how he picked that out. And I think that's something I've really got to work on, uh, just that base and the years of the, you know, people that have got years and years of consistent kilometres under their legs. Sure. Um, so that's what I'm doing here, really. Yep, it's yep. just a lot of mileage, big base, and just to build that um, aerobic base up again. Yep, yep, awesome. Yep. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we'll talk about that uh, about that soon. Um, moving yeah. on to your, to your 5K PB. Um, now, that was back in 2014 up in Brisbane, 14.07. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was, uh, that was, that was in the Vibrams again. Okay. Uh, yeah, the shoe fell off in that race okay. and then <laughs> I picked it up and put it back on and okay. I was like, yeah, got a PB and so you might have been in that was coming down. You might have been in sub 14. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Mm. Um, <laughs> but that was coming down off of Falls Creek and oh, okay. yeah. training with, um, a lot of the all the Australian runners, so no, it was that was a great race as well. Yeah. Mm. Um, 10k Hobart last year, running um 28:35. 28:35. Was it 10k? Yeah, yeah, the 10k in Hobart. Yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, that was um that was a great race. Um, me and Brett um had a great battle. Um, from start to finish, that was coming off um, the 3K, the Box Hill um, Twilight meet, the 3K where I got my PB. Okay. So um, I felt like I was, it was going to work really well into the 10K because I had that speed in the legs and yeah, and yeah, that was um, that was another good run. Uh, uh, the next, that was the first day I actually tried the the four percents. Okay. Yep. And yeah, they felt amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for Especially sure. Especially for that, of course. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay, 21K, um, 6334 up there in Brisbane, 2012. Yeah, that was a great race against um, Liam Adams. Uh, he's represented Australia numerous times in the marathon and, um, yeah, been to the Olympics. Uh, but, but um. Yeah, that was that was back in 2012. I was wearing the Vibrams uh, in all my races and PBs that year, mm. and I wore my Vibrams in that race, the half marathon. Yep. yep. Um, but yeah, it was beautiful conditions. Um, the first 10k was about 31 minutes, so we went out a bit slow, and then and then um, come home really strong, and we ran, I think. It was around 29 minutes for the last 10k. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it was um yeah great battle and uh, he just kicked away from me the last I think 200 meters. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. he was yeah he was he ran well. So all, all those all that racing did in vibrant obviously you, you know you had strong feet but did it ever sort of kick in the bum eventually or or not? Well, I have actually I got a serious in, injury um a stress fracture in the femur, and I was over in Bulgaria. I was uh, representing Australia in the World Half Marathon, and I felt like this, this slight pain before before the race, and I thought, oh, you know, it's nothing. You know, um, it's kind of just, you know, slight pain. And then as the as we started the race, I think 4k to go, I just felt this like crack um, in the femur. And I dropped off the pack, um, and and then kind of got myself together and caught back up to the the pack and and yeah, it was last I think K. Um, all the you know everyone was kicking home and I could just I could just feel it really you know throbbing and I was just limping to the, the end of the line. So mm-hmm. that was like the last. Last time I wore the Vibrams. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, they definitely. I think it definitely strengthened, you know, certain muscles and parts of the body. Like uh, I think the Achilles, mm-hmm. my ankles, got really strong from it. Um, also, I think it corrected my technique as well. It, um, it made me a lot more efficient. But 
and I, th- I think as a longer as a half marathon marathon like those long distances on the road I, they're just not not well suited to them yeah, but yeah. I still think like wearing them for track races or um, like 3k 5k you probably get away with the 10k yep, yep it's still okay if you're efficient enough but um, I wouldn't recommend anyone to wear them <laughs> yeah sure um, if they have got a background of like barefoot running yeah but like my first my first um my first session when i first started running was barefoot so yep. i went straight into it yep um yep. and just got stronger as the years went on yep. running yeah so. yeah no there's certainly a lot of positives to it that's for sure um yeah so let's let's talk about uh about marathon so you've got a pb there if it's still correct um 221.23 in uh, b wire in 2014 yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was um, yeah. Is that, that was, was that your last marathon? Yeah, that was my last okay. marathon. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> funny, I, I wore the Vibrams <laughs> okay. in that race. Yeah. And I was, I suppose, I was on like two thirteen, two thirteen pace yep. up to, I think thirty k, mm. and then bang, I just I hit the wall, <laughs> mm, mm. and. Yeah, I really started to go backwards. I was running like 330s, 340s, mm-hmm. and yeah, you know, I was, I was, I was struggling to get home. But I mean, afterwards, it was a massive, you know, I found it was a massive accomplishment and mm. and a great goal of mine to to actually even finish a marathon. Sure. Um, yep. But um, no, well, I think I didn't have the best prep going into that, and I didn't. It was kind of more of a just wanted to see how how it went. Mm. Um, it was kind of going off 10k training and yep. and seeing how you know just what it was all about. Yep. Um, yep. But yeah, 221 is not too bad, mate. In the old yeah, I mean <laughs> yeah, it's first one and yep. in in effort as well. So mm. yep, <laughs> obviously yeah, I look back now and I think. I was crazy for doing that, but yeah, yeah. Oh, well, felt right at the time. Um, yeah. All right, let's go back, mate. You grew up in Sydney. Um, if you could tell us about um, sort of what you're up to as a kid and what led you into running in the first place. Um, well, I first started running when I was in high school, and I was playing soccer at the time, um, and I was doing my studies, you know, HSC. And I was, you know, very, I was a very anxious kid and I was stressed out at that period of time. And um, my mum actually um, got me into running. So she said, oh, you know, maybe this could, you know, help with your mental health and anxiety. And I thought, yeah, I'll give it, I'll give it a go. I'll go down. And I think the first session I did, I was, oh, I think I'd like eight times a K and I went out really hard with the leaders and tried to try to keep keep up and hold on. Um, and then halfway through the session, I kind of died and and then carried on with it and finished the session. And uh, my coach, Sean Williams, at the time said, "You know, you've you've got a lot of um, heart and and I think you've got a bit of potential. So um, carry on with the running." Um, so I carried on playing soccer and I was running at the same time and studying. And then Sean said, uh, he said, look, you, you can't do two sports. You either got to pick one or the other. So I thought, well, the running is really helping me with the mental health side. So, and I was enjoying it. So I thought, oh, I'll carry on with the running and I'll give up the soccer. And yeah, that's what I did. I, I think what two years later I made, my first uh, World Cross team for Australia, yep. and um, went over to uh, the Middle East, and yeah, I got 29th in the World Cross. Yep. yep. So top 30. So I was really happy with that. Um, yep. Over yeah, there in, in Jordan, carried... wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, it just yep. carried on from then. Yep. Yeah. And um, you had uh, like Ryan Gregson and Brett Robinson in, the, in that team with you. Did you? know them before that trip yeah 
Um, not really. Uh, that was like kind of the first time I actually uh, got to know them, and you know they're all lovely blokes. Um, mm. I think there was Richard Richard Everest who was in the race as well. He he was an awesome runner. Um, yep. I think around thirteen forty as a eighteen year old, and and um, yeah. So there's I think me, Brett, uh, Ryan Gregson, Richard Everest, and um, I think there was uh, Dave Ricketts. Yeah, Dave Ricketts. Yeah, yeah. Was so, Everest was yeah. he was he from South Africa, uh, South Australia, or? Yeah, he was. He was a uh, yeah, based down, um from there. And then I yeah. think he, I think he had like some problems with his. Um, I'm not sure what happened to him, but yeah, okay. he was getting a lot of injuries yeah. and stress fractures. But, okay. Yeah. Uh, he was like an amazing, mm. amazing. Uh, Runner, ran 1340, I think, as an 18 year old, and also yep. he, I think he ran 3k 750. Yep, yep. Yeah, 18 or 19 year old. So yeah, yeah it's yeah, that's pretty incredible. It was up there. So when mm. you were 18, you were running um 824 for the three and uh, 1441 for the five. So obviously, I mean, yeah. you had some ability there early on. Um, you you didn't race over the shorter distances. Because you came from, you sort of started. Oh, late. really? No. Yeah, I, I didn't really concentrate on the 1500 or, or 800. Um, I had a few cracks at the 3K, 5K. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was kind of more, I think, then I went into the road circuit and started racing a lot more on the road. And um, I think I got pretty strong from that. And then, um, yeah. It's just um, went back to the track and ran some some you know fast times. Yep, yep. Now, um, but I think like yeah, go ahead. The like, 2012 was my biggest year. That was like my break for a year, mm, mm. and uh, that's when I started to kind of train with um, Ben St Lawrence and a few of the Melbourne track boys. Um, yep, yep. I went up to Falls Creek and and. And I think coming down from Falls Creek, ran a 5K and yep. a few track races, I ran ran some big PBs. So, yeah, yeah I think yep. that's definitely the group that you're in. You, it's important in the runners you're around. Yeah, 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 for sure. So um, last March, Jared Clifford wrote a great article, um, as he always does, um, in Runner's Tribe that went into detail about um, sort of the struggles you had dealing with um, OCD since a child that, led to uh, anxiety, mm. as you were mentioning before, at school and panic attacks and that. Um, yeah. um, were you, how, how, how were you able to manage that? Um, um, were, were you, were you, turn, you turned to running to sort of to manage that anxiety issues, but then, um, but then you, you mentioned about that, um, about uh, that stressy that you picked up. Um, at, at, you picked up a stressy yeah. at World Cross in 2009. And um, and then I th- yeah. and then I believe you um, you sort of that you know put you in a spiral of, of depression and that and then you um, uh yeah you, you turned uh, turned to the drink I should say so do you want to just talk about that uh, about how you, how you're dealing with all that and that that part of your life please. Um. Well, when I was nine years old, that's when it all started and that's when it occurred. Um. So I had. Like kind of a massive, I don't know, kind of breakdown, and um, uh, had just formed like this OCD and this compulsive uh, disorder where I was having to wash myself like a uh, hundred times a day, and and if I would have a shower, I'd have to shower like tw- two hours or three hours, and yeah, it was it was a a big problem, um, and then I kind of as a kid, I was, I mean, I didn't know how to deal with it, but I was seeing a psychologist, I think, once a week and getting counselling. But, um, yeah, it, it didn't really get that. It wasn't serious, I suppose, because, um, you know, when you're a child, you just kind of, I don't know, you'd, it's not that bad. And then as the years went on, um I think HSC study and and then going out. I think drinking and and um, 
also taking like recreational drugs it definitely made it a lot worse um and that that was my my i think you know obviously i went down that path because i was trying to find an escape and just just didn't know how to deal with the ocd so um obviously alcohol and and um other stuff was you know that was i suppose an easy an easier way to deal with it um and then i think dealing with that and having my running um it was always not consistent i was always in the running then out of the running and i couldn't just get a you know a consistent year together mm. um so i think the as the years went on like um yeah like the the addiction to alcohol and and it got worse and and then that's that's when i had my car crash i think it was the car crash was 2017 yep and yeah that was like my rock bottom like it ha- it happened a couple of times where i where i had a an accident or you know i got into a bit of trouble uh, got arrested a few times, and that r- didn't really, you know, I didn't really prove to me that I had a problem at that time. But um, I think having that final car accident, that's that's when I actually realised, and that's when I um, kind of hit rock bottom, and and when I seeked help, and I attended my first AA meeting, um, uh, and got sponsored so there's a guy there that around my age that got sponsored and went through the same kind of path in history um and he guided me through the first uh 30 days of going to see going to the meetings in aa and um yeah that that really that was a uh a massive eye-opener for me and and actually getting up and speaking in front of other people, talking about your issues, talking about why you was drinking, um, was a very, um, I think, you know, it's a massive relief and, and it helps a lot. Um, but, yeah, I did that. And then I think after, you know, you go through the 12 steps, so your first step and second step, and uh, the first step is, you know, you've got to admit to yourself and surrender that you've got a, an alcohol, alcohol problem or a drug problem. So that's what I did, and I went through the 12 steps and got through that. And mm. um, yeah, I mean, I haven't looked back since. So it's been about it's been two years now since I haven't had a drink, and I think that's pretty much why <laughs> all my running results are getting better. And obviously, you know, I'm more consistent. I'm trying, you know, I'm giving it my all and. And this is, you know, that's why I'm over at Kenya. And, and it's not, and the reason why I'm in Kenya as well, like it's not, it's not only just for running, it's to, it's to grow as a person to see um, how, you know, uh, to, to learn a, the different culture and, and to help others as well while I'm here. Um, yep. and, and at the same time, you know, really get, get strong and, and fit. Mm. Um but yeah. Um, so, so what brought you to um, like, to um, make the decision to sort of come out in the open about your personal struggles? Um, you know, through, through that article with Ron's well, tribe. Well, I think like going to the AA meetings made me become um, a more open person. Mm. Um, I was very inward. I didn't talk about a lot of the stuff, and I think going through that, um, going through AA meetings and talking more and talking to other people about my issues definitely made it a lot easier to open up mm. and um when jared decided to do the interview he started asking me some some questions about you know why you know why did you run well here and why did you do this and and, and i thought well i i got to be honest here i can't i can't lie about these things so that's when i decided to open up and uh and just be honest and say say how it was and and then I, after the article a lot of a lot of people were um shocked and amazed and and didn't realize that was actually happening 
in, yeah, in my life and for sure I mean, yeah that's so that's that's pretty much when i started to be in a, like talk more about it on social media and 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 even just you know talk to young runners as well if if they're going through any problems yep yep no that's excellent yeah. mate um yeah because like during those years of um of, of drinking obviously you know you weren't sitting around drinking for years and years and not running you were still running and you were still running it at a pretty high level, mm. like in 2012, yeah. you know, in 2012, back to the London Olympics, I mean, you just missed out by 10 seconds in both the five and the 10,000, and, and you set PBs for those distances. Um, so, you know, like, so thinking you, you know, you're still performing that level, and in the same year, you actually picked up an Aussie single at the World Half Marathon Championships that you mentioned in Bulgaria, um, finishing 24th. So that's, that's yeah. pretty good at Worlds. And then, um, yeah, two years later in 2014, you know, representing Australia over at the Glasgow Com Games, running the 10,000 metres and finishing in um, 18th spot in 29 even. So, um, and, and mm-hmm. so this is all happening. This high level running is still happening while you're still, you know, in and out with the drink. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, um, pretty much. Mm. I mean, I mean, I, I wasn't drinking every day and, mm. you know, it'd be. Um, you know, I'd be binge drinking and having, you know, a month or two months of drinking and then I'd start to get serious again. Um, but, you know, while I was over at the Com Games, I, I was all the swimmers and, and were having a drink because they didn't, already did their event and mm-hmm. I was drinking with them. Um, this was like a week before my race. Mm-hmm. And they're saying, oh, how would you go in your race? And I said, oh, I haven't done it yet. Like, I've, you know, it's, it's in another week's time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so even then, I couldn't really stay away from the drink. Even yeah. when I was in at a Com Games representing my my country in an athlete's village, I was still obsessing over the alcohol. Yeah. I mean, looking back now, I think, well, you know, I was an idiot for doing that. But I obviously, you know, I had a problem and I didn't realize that at the time. Mm. Um, but yeah, and then progressively, it just got worse. The, the addiction turned into um, just every day, and it was like I couldn't um, I couldn't really do day to day things. I was getting up, I was drinking, and then I was just drinking through the day. And then, you know, there was no there was no way I was running, and I was there was no way I was doing other stuff, and mm. no way I was working. Um, so, mm. yeah, that's when things started to get really, really bad. And um, I mean, it's I suppose it's it's a blessing in a, in a way, like a mm. blessing in disguise. I did have that car accident. I didn't hurt anyone. I didn't hurt myself. I got out of it and, um, and it just, just hit me, you know, mm. and then, mm. yeah, that's, yep. sometimes you got to get that low and get, and hit, have that rock bottom too. Yeah. Well, really obviously, move forward. yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. you're, you're drunk and you ran into a light pole and, got arrested and yeah think, and like you said yeah. that was probably you know it was bad but it was probably a light bulb moment for you and uh certainly um yeah i think you, you've turned your life around since you then in and out, yeah. yeah if you weave in and out of life and yeah things don't get that serious or that bad then yeah you can kind of just carry on and, and kid yourself but you know things do get yeah um pretty bad and i'll and yeah. yeah i mean i look back now and i think you know it was I was very lucky to get out of it um, with no scratches and, yep. and you know, and also to not hurt anyone else as well. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yep. So, um, look, obviously, yeah, like you said, over, over two years sober now and uh, the results are starting to flow. Um, like 2019, yeah. like it was, it was a big year. Um, all those, uh, about four of those PBs I mentioned earlier in, in the podcast for all last year. Um, then you picked yeah. up another Aussie singlet at the World Cross in Denmark over there. Um, yeah. And then I'm just interested because you went out chasing um, another Aussie singlet for for Doha, um, the World Athletic Championships in the 10,000 meter. Um, now the qualifying time was 27:40. Now I see you, yeah. you went over to the Peyton Jordan over there at Stanford in May and you ran um, 27:56 finishing third but yeah. missing, missing out obviously by 16 seconds um mm. and then a week before the qualification period ended on the 6th of september that's when you went over to norway and ran that pb of 27.54 so 14 seconds yep. short of of that doha um qualifying time mm. 
But um, yeah, so they, so they, um, so the one in Stanford, it was supposed to be paced for a twenty-seven uh, forty race, and I think there was only two pay. They only paced to two k, three k, and and then dropped out, and it was kind of become more of a you know pure race. But um, I went to the front at around six seven k because I knew. If this pace was going to stay the same, we were never going to run under 2740 or mm. even break 28. So mm. um, I picked it up for a few fast laps. And then uh, I think Ben True, yeah, Ben True uh, took over. And then I kind of just stuck on him. And and it was the last, I think, 800 meters or 400 meters kick. And yeah, I got third. I was, I was pretty happy with that. Um, and then. Uh, went overseas to Norway, but uh, running that, I still got selected on the uh, Doha team. Okay. Um, as a wild card. Yep. Um, okay. So I did. I, I was on the team, but then I come down with this really bad um, virus. Okay. Uh, I think it was like two. I think it was two weeks before the the actual um, the ten k. Yeah, and so I had to unfortunately pull out of the the world champs mm. with a virus. But um, mm. you know, I was I was just I was happy to to make the team. Um, but yeah, it was just unlucky, I suppose that um, you know I got the virus. That's mm. that's just were you in the were you in a though. training camp like overseas at that stage or when you got the virus? No, no. Oh, okay. um, I, I I had the choice to fly over um, three days before. Okay. So I didn't have to go with the team. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so I, I waited till the three days um, before leaving, and and I was still sick, and I thought, no, it's it's not going to happen. Like, mm. so I contacted mm. um I contacted AA and, and I just told him, but um, you know that's that's a that's a tough thing about being a distance runner like or an, or an athlete mm. train hard four years of hard training and then mm. you can get sick oh, yeah. uh, two weeks exactly or, I, a week before it'd be a nightmare i always have um, that discussion you know we us recreational runners worry about getting sick before you know some annual run yeah. i always say imagine training for your whole life for the olympics and then something yeah. like that happening like and it happens and, and you know yeah. about it so yeah it'd be devastating mm. uh, now, my training partner um benny st lawrence he he was always in amazing shape and ran. Um, he ran a thirteen ten twenty seven twenty four. He had he had the Australian record for ten k, and every time the Olympics come around, he would something would happen and and um, you know it's just unfortunate really. Mm. Like you can be in such awesome shape and then you know bang you can get a flu or or something mm. uh, week before. Yeah, for sure. Now, I was looking um the opening qualifying window, I guess, period for Tokyo was May, started May last year, um, which yeah. which would have been when you were running um, over there in Stanford and in Norway. Um, so I was just thinking, yeah. now, now that qualifying time is pretty quick, 27, 28. So um, did you sort of yeah, have well, that in, in the back of your mind? Obviously, you were trying to get your 27, 40, but was that sort of in the back of your mind, maybe I could even pull off a 27, 28, or was that just sort of like a little bit bit too too fast? Yeah. Um, I wasn't really thinking about that at the time. Like, I, if I got in the race, I would go, I, I would have I would have had a crack, but, like, really, I was just trying to break 28 for the first time. And then, mm. um, you know, if I run... If I run really well, twenty seven forty, I'd be very happy to run twenty seven forty. But mm. um, I think like after I ran twenty seven fifty six at Stanford, I I had confidence that I could run under twenty seven forty or even twenty seven thirty with more mm. uh, more base in me. But um, I think after after those two races, I kind of yeah. I, well, I met Renato after after the race in Norway. And, um, I just, you know, I, th- I thought, you know, I've always had the passion to do the marathon, and and I think you can make a an amazing career out of it, and and also, um, you know, it's it's the pinnacle I think of distance running, doing mm. the marathon, 
Um, so I kind of, uh, yeah, I lost that. I lost a bit of the passion to go for the 10K in, mm. in the Olympics. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I just I lost a bit of that drive and I thought, you know, mm. I would really like to run a fast marathon and then and then um, go back to the 10K because how Renata, what Renata was saying to me was, you know, you because I I could always do these awesome sessions like 1K reps and have a have recovery and then you know and run some really fast times, but because um, there was a few sessions where I ran and, and my coach at the time said, oh, you should be able to run 27:30, but I think because I didn't have that strength and that base. Mm. I wasn't able to pull pull out the twenty seven thirty twenty seven forty. So mm. um, there was Dave Dave Ritson nine. He he trained he trained for the marathon um, and ran I think two o two o seven and then went back to the track and he ran he ran under thirteen minutes and he yep. was running faster PBs in the track. Yep. So yep. No. I'm kind of looking at that approach just for just sure. to build. Build a massive base and try and run a fast marathon, and then go back to the 10k, 5k, yep. and just work on the speed. Yep. Yeah. No, I reckon mm. that's that's not a bad angle, mate. It's um, it's yeah. Yeah. As you said, it's happened many years um with runners. Uh, they come back for the mm. marathon just the strength, like you said, the strength and that, you know, that yeah. extra yeah ability. Mm. Now you ran Zatapak down there in December when um when Stewie Mac picked up that Tokyo qualifying time. Yeah. He's third. Qualifying yep. time, yeah. So you ran, yeah, twenty-seven, twenty-three, and as you mentioned, knocking off Benny Saints' um, national record by one mm. second. Um, oh. No, it was, yeah, was a bloody awesome night. Um, but I was just thinking, you know, with you guys, you know, run around circles in a world of pain. Do you did you get a chance to sort of soak up that atmosphere as well? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of mm. not really well while I was racing, but afterwards, it it was it was great. Yeah. I mean, I think Athletics Australia could have um, promoted it a bit more and, and marketed it a bit more. Like, I mean, I didn't see anything in the papers or articles yep, definitely, um, definitely. about the lead up to to Zadipek. I mean, yep. we had you know four of the best distance runners in the country, and um, there was nothing about it. But um, you know, obviously the 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 atmosphere was amazing. Um, yeah, and he ran he ran very well um and i mean amazing amazing performance from patrick team as well exactly to, yeah yeah to just lead the whole way and that's right um and he only missed out by three I mean, seconds i think he ran 27 31 from yeah. memory so yeah so i mean but yeah. stewie stewie you know ran smart and yeah. just kicked away from the last lap yeah sure but um i think pat patty patrick will get the under 27 28 um mm. I think he's definitely he's definitely got that firepower. But um, I was coming I was coming back from overseas in Europe, um, training with Sandro Moen and Renato, and I think I think just that program for four weeks because when I had the virus, I had a, I think six weeks, four weeks off. Went over to Europe and started training with Sandro, and, and I've never witnessed. Uh, an athlete training so hard like him like mm. every day is hard like so he's easy he runs the 340s 330s mm. yeah um, his warm up his warm up before a session is 330 340 um and then he's doing massive sessions as well right mm. so i was trying to keep up with him i mean i got to i think three weeks of keeping up with him and then i just cooked i, I got cooked and i was supposed to renato said to me like uh, i mean I, th- I think you can pace 30k at three minutes per k in valencia marathon where sandre ran 26 but um i was unfortunately i was a bit tired at that time i got to 10k and uh, pulled out but i think coming from that trip i mean i learned a lot about the program learned a lot about um like the approach towards the marathon big sessions and um and the sessions are big, but I mean, obviously in Australia we've got this this um, tradition that we do three sessions a week, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And Renato's approach on that is we you cannot do um, three marathon sessions per week, you know. So if you're training for the marathon, 
Mm. You've got to have long sessions, big sessions that simulate that marathon um, where you can only do like maybe two a week um, or a 10-day cycle where you do maybe one, one, one a week and then two the next week, something like that. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, um, I think like, yeah, I mean, I was here the other week and um, I was in the car and I watched the Kenyans. They did a 40K um, t- uh, like time trial and they ran like 205 for 40K. Okay. And that's over all the rolling hills, yeah. altitude. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they, they're, it's a, it's pushing the limits, it's pushing that boundary, but mm. I think if you can add it, you can get away with it. I mean, you you'll get very strong. Mm. Um, mm. But yeah, you got to just be careful as well. Like with the days, I mean. So I had a session yesterday. I did twenty five twenty twenty five k in an hour twenty. So like a fart lick. Yep. And um, then actually, I I've might got, can, can I just get you to run through like your usual weekly training at the moment? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well. So the first week, um, it was just easy running because I come, I was coming off a foot uh, problem. Okay. Um, and then uh, the second week was, well, I did a did a session, um, but the third week, um, so the third week I did a morning run. So six six in the morning, most of the run. So I, so the weeks change all the time. So Renato. Mm. Uh, has you know sometimes sessions on a Sunday and then the might, session might be on a Monday. So, so are you just I mean, running with with Renato Canova's athletes, or are there like other groups join in, or, or how's it sort of structured? So, I do my own stuff uh, on my easy days. Um, so I run like four tens, four twenties. I'll have a twelve twelve uh, k in the morning. I do four twenties for that. Then an 18k in the Arvo, and I'll do like four tens for that, and then, um, and then the session I'll um, run with um, the group. So there's like ten Kenyan runners, um, and then there's Sandro Mowen and a few other um, Europeans. Yep. So I'll train with them. So last week, I, um, Monday was 12k, 18k. Um, in Yavo, just easy. Um, Tuesday was uh, 16k um, tempo. Um, that was when the Kenyans did 40k at 286. Okay. Yeah. Is, is that tempo five. roughly around marathon pace? or? Yeah, roughly around that. Um, mm. uh, because I'm, 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 I'm getting strong, I'm not where I was before. Mm. So I'm just kind of building it slowly, um, but yeah. So Tuesday and then it was uh, Wednesday, just another easy run. Thursday, another easy run. Uh, then Friday was uh, the 24k. Yep. Um, a 25k in an hour 20, and um, that was that's that's been my best session. Uh, since being here so i kept up with sandre on that and yeah i was really happy pulled yeah. away from him the last um k to go so yeah um you know i was, I was very happy with that session so now i've just got to build off of that and yeah um and just for the I listeners I've got 40 uh, i'll cat- just i'll just say that sandre mullins the european uh, record holder he's run a 205 just for the listeners yeah. to know yeah 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 205 yeah and mm. ran 206 mm. at valencia mm. um mm. Very what, tough runner. What um, age is, is, is he at? I don't, is he in his late uh, 20s? He's 29, or? I think. 29. Yeah, he's 29. Okay. Yep. And how yeah. long has he been with so, Renato for? Um, so he was with Renato. He's been with, with Renato for maybe now, I think, four years. Okay. Yeah, yep. yeah four yep. or five years. Yep. Um, there's, yeah, so. All right, um, back, back to your training, yep. Uh, yeah, so he, he, what was it? Um, yeah, so the last K I pulled away from Sandra and, yep. um, yep. 
that's you know that's been my best session since really. Yep, that's um, good. A bit of confidence booster. Yeah, yeah, and uh, now I just got uh, I got a forty k in two weeks time at three thirty pace. Okay. Um, that's just going to be like time on the on the feet and sure. just to run the distance. Yep. Um, and then mm. I've got like seven weeks before um, uh, Hamburg marathon. Yeah. So seven, eight weeks, I think, eight weeks of training. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Um, all right, I say you're doing Hamburg. For some reason, I thought you were doing London. Yeah, well, that was the plan, but um, I, that's changed now because Renato said that um, they're going to be going, there's going to be groups that are going to be going for 201. So Bikili and Kipchoge, obviously, they're going to mm-hmm. go for okay. 201, and then there's going to be another group that's going to be 206, and then... I think there's going to be a big drop off after that. Um, right. So okay. Hamburg's got a better. Uh, uh, there's a few pacemakers and and there's a big group going for uh, two eleven. Yep. Sure. Yep. yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um. Now, um, obviously, two eleven thirty these days. I mean, it's pretty fast, isn't it? I mean, down from two nineteen from previous Summer Olympics. Um. Yeah. And, um, I mean, you can compare that to 10K, though. The 211 is not that. I think 27.28 for 10K is a lot tougher than, than yeah. 211. Yeah. Or yep. 211.30, yeah. Yep. Um, as far as, so obviously that's that's what you're going to try to do to get to um, get to Tokyo is to run that qualifying time. Mm-hmm. Are there any any Aussies who have, who have run that time have put their hand up saying they're going at this stage? Um. Uh, Brett's trying a 2.10.55, I think. Uh, is, is, Rainer, he, he's is he going to nominate to go, though? Or? Yeah, yeah, he's, he I is. think he, he okay. is. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then you've got Rainer that's run 2.11.25, I think. Yeah, around that. Um, so, it, And then I think who else? Then you've got guys like Liam, Benson Lawrence, um, Julian Spence. He's, he's going for... Um, London Marathon, so he, he's going to try and run a 211 as well. Mm, mm. Um, I think with like these new shoes, like um, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of talk about these Alpha Flyers, and I heard they got banned, and now they're they now they're not banned. They got released, and um, uh, um, IAAF brought out a rule that they've got to be 40 millimeters stack height, mm. and I think they've got. Th- our flies have got 39.5 millimetres, mm. so Nike obviously um, just snuck under. Um, mm. So, yeah, but, uh, I'll put them on and see how I go, yeah. I yep. think I'm pretty confident I can run 211, like, um, um, yeah, but if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I've just got to, got to focus on something else, you know, keep carrying on. Yeah, well, you know, it'd be good, you know, it's exciting, Um to have all these Aussie blokes, you know, getting down to those times, you know, not to have one yeah, or two, I mean, but to actually have a handful of them going for it. You know, yeah, it's, a, it's exciting. I mean, it pushes the, it, it pushes each each athlete, and and I yeah. think um, I wouldn't be surprised if um, Liam runs a two o nine or two ten, and um, you know, Benny can run a two ten, so. Mm. There's going to be a lot of guys going for it, yeah. Mm. I think those guys, uh, Liam and, and Benny, are running b in a couple of weeks, so um, yeah, you'll yeah, have a pretty good idea of, of what they run because, you know, they won't run another one, so. Yeah, yeah, so I think, yeah, that's mm. that's a ben- benefit running, I, sp- I suppose, later towards yeah. the the, end, the period. Yeah, so, so what's the date of Hamburg? Uh, 9th of, uh, 19th. 19th of April. Oh, so the week before London. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. So I think Liam might do London if he if he doesn't qualify for Lake Beagle, but yep. I mean, I think he'll do it. I think he'll qualify mm. in Lake Beagle. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right, well, from my side of things, I'm looking forward to it, mate, all us listeners. Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, it'll be interesting to see what Kipchoge and Bikili can do as well. They they're yeah. going at it. I think, life, I think they so. are going to put on a show for sure. Like um, yeah. I don't don't think we're going to. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. 
Kipchoge, you think, at the Olympics. I don't know why Big Healy's doing this, so. So, yeah, it could be a yeah. last chance to see those guys go head-to-head in, in, a, in a real one. And like yeah. you said, probably go 201. Oh, you know, that, that won't surprise anyone. Yeah, and the new alpha flyers, who knows? <laughs> yeah, I mean, actually, I wouldn't mind, you know. You're, you're an hockey boy, aren't you? Well, I'm not sponsored, but... Oh, okay, um, right. you wear them, yeah. So, uh, I wear them. So, it's a big difference from Vibram's to yeah, the next for percent. Yeah, sure, for sure. Yeah. Well, what, what do you feel personally about running running fast in, in a shoe that's, that's giving giving back so much time? Uh, I don't think they're fast over like like shorter distances because mm. you, you can't get your maximum speed. But I think definitely, um, like, definitely – the last, you know, that last 12k of the marathon, you're not runners don't seem to be hitting the wall as much, yep. and they're they're able to just carry on and and maybe you know go a bit quicker that last last 5k. Um, like I, I don't know if they're fast, they're any faster in a 10k. I think they're faster in a half. Mm. Uh, I but, mean, yeah, I, it's I, just. I mean, yeah. I'm wearing the the uh, the next percent, and a lot a lot of us are wearing them even in some of our, our hard training sessions on concrete and that, because how, how well our legs pull up the next day, you know, like like even City to Surf, yeah. I used to run in a pair of race flats and, you know, that last 2K downhill, my calves would be shot for a week. And then you wear those yeah. shoes and the next day you're out doing 400s. So that, yeah, man, that's, I know. What, that's what I love about them. Like, they are fast, but just it just your pins pull yeah. up so much better. And you think, you know, longevity as a runner, that's that's got to be a good thing as well. I mean, yeah, I think it's. I think they're great for the sport, um, but I'm happy that there's like a rule now, like where yeah. there's yeah, there's a to. limit. Yeah. It's, I mean, if it was going to carry on, I mean, it would have been ridiculous. But mm. um, I think, like, yeah, I think it's great for the sport. People are running faster. Um, there's more talk about it. There's more talk about um, you know running the marathon, and people are getting excited to. To break their PBs, um, mm. um, but I think like I think it could work for different different individuals. I think if you're a heavier runner, or uh, um, uh, then you know a really light Kenyan, I think they can help help more because they're they're giving more energy back, and you get there's less chance you're gonna you're gonna smash up your quads. Yep. Um, and also, I think it helps the recreational runners more. I think because I think like it gives that spring back to you. It gives that bounce back. So I think a lot of older runners they lose that kind of spring and and um, you know that response back f- um, from running. So yep. that I think it allows allows you to kind of get that bounce back that f- um, oh, and right. yep. a little bit more efficient as well. Yeah. Yeah, well, you just get degrading through through the through the tendons and ligaments as you get older, so you lose a bit of that spring naturally. So, like I said, you might get a little bit yeah. a bit of that back here yeah, from a pair of shoes. Why not? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're amazing. I've done sessions in them, and the next day, I'm, I'm you know, my calves uh, hardly even feel like they've had a workout. So, yeah, yep. um, yeah, they're they're great shoe. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Mate, do you see the um the Kiwi twins running around over there? Jake and Zane Robertson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of them lives in Ethiopia. I think oh, Zane. Oh, you're right. He does. Zane. Yeah. yeah. I think um I think it's Jake. I think Jake, Jake. lives in in Yeah, he does. Uh, yeah. I don't see I don't see him much. Um, yeah. He he was in, thinking of and I think Zane was too, but he was thinking about building accommodation over there for overseas runners to sort of come over and and do some training. Yeah, he's got a guest house. Yeah, yeah oh, he's okay. got a guest house. Yeah. Yeah. So he's. And I've a, seen him driving around, but yeah. I haven't seen him run. No. Okay. Yeah. Right. I mean, Eton's not a big place. You you think you'd run into each other? <laughs> yeah. I, that's what I would have thought. But um, yeah. I actually haven't seen Julian Wonders either. Mm. Okay. Um. So yeah. Um. Mm. Yeah. They they must they might train. I don't know. Different time maybe. Mm. Mm. Um. So how long have you been over there for? I've uh, been here for how long's it been now? See, five weeks now. Yeah, and this is yeah. your first time to Africa. Yeah, first time to Kenya. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 
And how are you sort of going with, um, I mean, are you sort of getting into the Kenyan lifestyle and, you know, they train hard, but they sort of rest back and um, eat yeah, simple, simple foods and simple here. diets and all that? Yeah. Yep. I mean, the place here is perfect for running. I mean, yep. you've got your running trails outside your front door and, you, you know, six in the morning you've got, you know, 200 runners to run with. Mm. Um, uh, there's massage therapists. Um you know, and they're, and they're actually they know what they're talking about. It, mm. um, and yeah, like I mean, conditions are great. You do a bit um, of massage therapy yourself, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I so I know kind of what I'm talking about. So, yeah, you know, mm. uh, these guys are the you know they're very good at what they do. Mm. Yep. Um, I think I think they just. They've treated so many people, and I yeah. think they've learnt a lot off the Europeans as well, yeah, the okay. physios and yep. therapists yep. that have come over. Yep. And what sort of diet? But, um, what sort of food are you eating regularly during the day? Uh, so I have I have uh, I have goat um, twice a week. Yep. Uh, usually on a Saturday and a Sunday. Yep. And then the other days I have like ugali. Um and this like green vegetable, uh, I forgot what it's called, but um yeah. And so morning I'll have uh, a cup of tea, um and um this like kind of croissant, um bread called mand- mand- mandazi. Okay. Yep. Uh, and then for lunch I'll have uh pumpkin, um potatoes, um and jabati mm-hmm. uh like this bread okay um yeah. and then for dinner usually ugali ugali and and vegetables mm. yeah and do you feel better but, um, on, on on that sort of food uh i i i don't know like i mean yeah. it's hard to tell because the first two weeks uh, um i was here i was i wasn't running so it's been kind of a gradual build up Mm. Uh, this this last week has is has been like my first you know real good week so um i think i think it's it's not just only the food it's everything like mm. it's the attitude it's the environment mm. yep. um and you know it's a, it's the people that train with as well like there's no way i could find um any athletes in australia to train with and, and push myself like I, like i'm doing here yep um but um yeah i mean it's it, it does take a uh, like a few weeks to get used to because mm. you know, it's not you kind of you know, just running and and yeah you're a full-time athlete mm. um so th- there's no like yeah. servo to grab a mars bar and a coke on the corner or oh really no <laughs> <laughs> sneaking no. when no one's looking uh, no. <laughs> uh so yeah. that's probably the first thing I'll be looking for when I get back to Australia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, but uh, they're lovely people, though. I mean, yeah. there's the, the you, know, you go for a run and the kids, the kids run with you, and yeah, um, you know, you, so it's it, yeah, it's it's great culture, great atmosphere. There's that famous um, famous stadium, not that's in Eton, isn't it? That stadium that we see sometimes on TV and pictures where the Kenyans train, like uh, a little track. It's got like a stadium around it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. <laughs> the funny thing is, they they started to build that stadium and the track, and and then something happened with the government, and they stopped stopped building it, and and um, but now they just use it as there's just like a dirt road, dirt 400 yeah. meter um, track, and yeah. Know, okay. Seems to work well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you still yeah. get all the all the paragliders going there to jump off over the Rift Valley there and. Yeah, so there's um there's accommodation there um, called Kiravu, and that's where they all stay. Um, all the Europeans and um, you know the paragliders, they all stay there because that's right on the valley. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like um, you've got you've got places here. Um, you can rent, you know, sixty bucks a month if you wanted to come here. Um, but that's that's like you know your own home. You haven't got security. Um, there's no toilet inside the house. It's outside. Um, and then you've got like your basic guest houses. That's kind of where I'm staying, and that's fifteen dollars a night. Yep. So it's still pretty cheap. 
and then mm-hmm. you got Kiraview. Kiraview is like you know hundred hundred twenty dollars a night. So that mm-hmm. so real tar- they're targeting the real like high end yeah, um, yeah. people. Yeah. But I mean, for for somebody you know for some uh, a young runner who who wants to experience different culture and and train with the best, you can come here and and hardly spend any money and and really train train hard and and pretty much live like a full-time athlete yeah yep, yep. and it's fairly safe there's, there's no issues with any of that uh, it's, it's very safe i mean I, I was a bit worried about that but there's no issues with that mm. um when i was in nairobi it was a bit it was a bit um the security okay yeah it was a bit dodgy but yeah um yeah here i mean i walk you know you can walk walk here at night and there's no issues mm. it's pretty much just all runners really it's yeah Yep. In a town of running. Uh, uh, the place I go to is it's called Mama Rambo. So she, um, <laughs> she's the one. Uh, so I've just paid her up front, and she cooks me um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm. Um, and that's that's like you know the real kind of the the Ken, what all the Kenyans eat. Um, but yeah, I mean, the th- three months, four months. This place is, um, I think, from January to. To April, like the conditions and the running, the running atmosphere is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, all right, mate, taking up a lot of your time. We're going to finish up soon, but just one more question for the runners. Um, are there any sort of any sort of key sessions leading into um, into Hamburg that um, that you'll sort of use, you know, as an indicator of, of, of your marathon fitness, or are you sort of just trusting the work uh-huh. that you've done? So there'll be a few 40k runs. Mm. Um, so there's a 40k that I've got in two weeks' time. And that was um, at 3:30 pace. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is that, that's the equivalent. Is that someone running. giving you water and, and stuff along the way, like a? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's someone that, um, like, um, Renato will drive the car. Yep. And you know he'll he'll um g- give out the drinks, but yeah, that's that's pretty much the equivalent to running at sea level, like 315s or yep. three. Sure. Those three twenties. Yeah. Have you adjusted uh, to that not, to the altitude yet? Yeah, I've adjusted now. Yeah. Um, you just got to take. You just got to really listen to your body if you're yeah. here, and and take it easy when you're feeling tired. Yep. Yeah. Also, get treatment. I'm getting treatment like three times a week. Yeah. Um, that's very important. Um, because um, it is un. It's it's not an even surface like the trails here, so mm. you got to be careful. Um, what shoes are you wearing but, on, on mostly training runs? So I wear the next percents yep. on um, the big, uh, the long marathon sessions, mm. and also if I've got a really quick long run, I wear the next percents. Mm. And then on the other days, just um, either the uh, the turbos, the Nike turbos, or uh, Nike Epic Reacts. Okay. Uh, yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. But I'm not sure what what my program is going to be in another. Um, I've got the program for this month yep. um, in March, but I'm not sure after that. Um, but knowing Renato, he'll you know he'll have sessions like 30 times 1k on, 1k off, or um, you know 40, maybe a 45k long run mm. um, with variations in it. Yeah. Yep. Um, but but yeah, isn't his training something. philosophy is roughly around doing a lot of time at, at race pace and sort of increasing the duration that you spend at that race pace as you get closer to to the event? Is that sort of roughly yeah. how he works? Yeah, yeah. So a lot of it's um, race pace, covering the distance, um, um, really working on that thirty to forty k yeah. um, area. Mm. Where a lot of people do hit the wall. Yeah. Um. So his approach is you need to do you need to train the distance. You need to do sessions, um, for that distance, mm. to, to be able to you know stay strong for the whole marathon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that so, in, yeah, in, in I mean, dura- It doesn't have to be distance. It can be just duration or. Yeah, it, can, it doesn't have to be distance. Yeah. Um. But he does like his like long long runs for yeah. long hard long runs. Um, yeah, yeah. 
but then you have a few days of recovery, yeah. you know, maybe three or four days, and then and then you do a big track session, and yeah. and and that's really targeting um, the speed and and race pace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. for these sessions, you you need to make sure you're fresh because yeah. uh, you go into these sessions and and you know, if you're a bit tired, you, you, the fatigue can just accumulate. And so that that's what I found in Italy. I was I was just training with Sandro, and I wasn't taking it easy for me. He was taking it easy, but I was, you know, always working hard. And at the end of it, you just you just cook yourself. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Cause the sessions are so big. Yeah. Um, okay. But um, no, I mean, um, yeah. So yeah. yeah, that's about it, really. I mean, yeah. I just yeah. got to wait and see how it all goes. For sure, mate. For yeah. sure. Um, look, I'd like to mention to the listeners um, the the GoFundMe page that you've sort of set up to um to help raise funds to support yeah. put, support your um you know your living and training expenses um. Whilst uh, chasing yeah. that that, that uh, goal of getting to the Olympics, um, I'm sure the listeners will uh, will follow the uh, the link that I'm going to put in the notes below to help you out. Um, I was I was more than happy to um, whack a few bob your way a couple of hours ago, mate, um, just to help Aussie athlete oh, chasing thanks. his dreams. No, no worries, mate. But um, I've uh, I've also posted that link on the Running Guide podcast Facebook, mate. So um, so hopefully yeah. um, the listeners and um, and those people can sort of help you out a bit. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers. Um... I've got I've got an um a GoFundMe for um kids over here um that need running shoes. So I'm going to a school um a mentally challenged um orphan school okay. this uh weekend. Right. And I'm raising money to to buy around two hundred pairs of shoes to just um give to the school. Yeah. Um and, and maybe help out with just um a few other things. So um, yeah, so you can go on my Facebook page or Instagram and there's a GoFundMe, um, for the school kids and also there's a GoFundMe for, for, um, for my running as well. So, yep, um, awesome. yeah, that'd be great. If anyone can donate, yeah, it'd be fantastic. Yep, yep. There you go. Listeners, jump in and help out. All right, mate, before yep. we finish up, anything else you want to add to the conversation I haven't covered? Um, yeah, I'd just like to say thank you to Tony Lang- Langligan. Um, he's a he's a good mate of mine back in Melbourne. He's helped me out big time, you know, um, putting you know, letting me stay at his house. Um, uh, thank his family as well. Also, Steve Deneen, He was a, he's he uh, supported me a lot as well through through when I was coming back into the running. Um, and yeah, that's that's about it, really. Um, yep. No, for yeah. sure, mate. For sure. So yeah, thanks. No, we'll yeah. look. thanks, thanks, Harry. And mate. also for... Box Hill, yeah, Box Hill Running Club. Oh. They supported me massively as well. Um, oh, wow. coming over here, so awesome. fantastic club. Any kids wanna wanna join that club? Yeah, definitely. They're great sport and running culture there. Head down to Box mm. Hill. Yeah, awesome. Yep. All right, mate. All right. Look, um, look, thanks heaps for giving up um, your time to be a guest on the Running Guide podcast. Um, all your best for, uh, for Hamburg. Um, securing yeah, that, uh, that spot on the team for your first Olympics. Um, yep. It's certainly been an amazing story so far, Harry, and it's only going to get bigger and better, I reckon. Um, yeah, thanks. And I'll yeah. whack some of those, uh, those, some of those social um, handle over um, onto the show yeah. notes below as well, mate, including those, um, those links over to the GoFundMe stuff. All right. Cheers, mate. No, no. Thanks for that. Thanks for the chat. No worries, Harry. Interview. Thank you very much. No worries. See you later. All, right, mate. All the best, Harry. Bye. See you, mate. See you, mate. Bye. All right, yeah, guys. Thanks again for listening to the Running Guy podcast. Really enjoyed that chat with Harry over there in Eton, Kenya. Uh, follow along if you haven't already. Uh, check out uh, Harry's GoFundMe links in the show notes below and other social handles for himself and myself. And uh, if you could leave some ratings and reviews on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, um, just helps with the visibility so um, other runners can find the podcast and listen along. All right. Thank you very much. Train smart. Keep smiling. Till next time.